Welcome to Social Ella Ministries, where we are committed to glorifying God while exposing the devil. In this episode of the Prophetic Academy, I'm going to speak about the or some of the growing pains of an emergent prophet. In Exodus 3, the Lord called Moses, had him do a couple of things, and next you know he was sending him to Egypt. And many people may have the impression that if the Lord calls him or her as a prophet, the Lord is going to call the person one day and then send the person out to like prophesy to the nations the following day. It doesn't usually work that way. Even with Moses, even though the Lord called him and sent him shortly afterwards, Moses had endured a process. He had been raised in the palace in Egypt for 40 years, for 40 years. Then he was out in the wilderness for 40 years. Then the Lord sent Moses back to Egypt to lead people into the wilderness. So the first two thirds of Moses' years, life, spent in a palace in Egypt, then out in the wilderness, those things all played a role in what Moses did in the last third of his year, life where he led the Israelites into the wilderness. So one way or another, the Lord puts you through a process. So hopefully that will shatter any illusions that you may have had, that because the Lord called you yesterday, that he's made you a prophet today, and he's going to send you forth. You're going to be in the wilderness or the cave usually for a couple of years and it's a refinement process now for the growing pains because that's part of the pain when you know the Lord has called you he may start revealing things to you he may start having dreams and visions you, you have seen things that come to pass and the Lord may not even give you a platform to air those things and he may give you a platform where you put the information out that this is going to happen and it happens, and very few people notice. And a part of this lesson is, be careful. Because you may want the attention, but the Lord is protecting you. The Lord may give you a dream and a vision. It comes to pass, or He speaks to you. And it's a revelation about something to come. It comes to pass, but it's about training you to hear His voice. Training you to let the Holy Spirit lead you. Develop the confidence in you. That what you've heard is from him. So you know he may have you put it out. It's not so you can get attention. Because as I mentioned in another video, prophets endure spiritual warfare. And sometimes he shields you from the warfare that you may not be ready for. Because that's also part of the process. To prepare you for the warfare that comes with being a prophet. And with this thing about emerging prophet. Sometimes the warfare is within because you're ready to go forward, but the Lord is holding you back. And I'll share a quick story. There was a time when I called into a, a radio show. I don't remember exactly how it happened, but I think I may have told about a dream that I had and then I gave the interpretation. I was listening another time and a lady called in with a dream. And she was given all these descriptions about getting off an elevator, how someone got in front of her, and it had to do with the pharmacy. And the Lord gave me the interpretation for the dream. She called in and was trying to get an interpretation for the dream. One of the hosts, the man said, oh, if that guy was on the line, he could probably tell you. And he was speaking about me. <laughs> but there was a waiting list then. Um, the next time they had a ministry call, I called in and I actually got through and I was going to give them interpretation and dream to speak about how someone, why they, why they walk into the pharmacy was because it represented pharmacia, sorcery, and the person was trying to cut the person's, so I had the breakdown and I was about to give it and then the other host, they shut me down. It's just like previously the guy was saying, if a guy 
which seemingly the gift to interpret dreams was on a line he could give the interpretation. And then I got in the next time and I'm giving the interpretation. But then they shut that down. And it's just one of those things where, sure, the Lord could have opened that door for me. But he wasn't ready. And even at that time, the most popular video on this YouTube channel was actually about dream interpretation. And people had come to me about dream interpretation. But the Lord's not going to open that door for me. So I had to realize that it, it wasn't his will. That made it a little bit painful. That crushing will help you in the long run. Now, while it would have been good for that lady to have the interpretation of a dream, maybe the Lord gave it to her another way, or maybe it wasn't time yet. But also with that, the Lord also wants to ensure that you don't get puffed up with pride because you will fall, and that you're truly letting the Holy Spirit lead you. There are times when the Lord will reveal things to you, but it's not your place to say it. And it's not necessarily even your place to even pray about it. He's just showing you. It's just for your information as opposed to for your action. Now turn to the Bible. In 1 Samuel 3, the Lord, he didn't call Samuel and say, I am calling as a prophet like he did with Jeremiah in Jeremiah 1.5. He gave Samuel a revelation. And in fact, at the time when the Lord called Samuel, Samuel didn't even know the Lord's voice. It was Eli the priest who told Samuel, oh, that's the Lord calling you and how to respond to him. And then the Lord gave Samuel a prophecy. But he was a young man. And Samuel ended up sharing it with Eli, in part because Eli pressured him to. But Samuel being recognized as a prophet, it took a while. So it's not always immediate. Which is why you have to stay humble. In 1 Samuel 3, verses 19, And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him. That is the most important thing, that the Lord is with you. Also, a lot of times people want to get recognized as a prophet. It is best to be a son of God. Like Romans 8.14 tells us that those who are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. 2 Corinthians 6, 14-18 speaks about not having fellowship with darkness. There's no not being unequally yoked and tells us to come out of those things so the Lord can accept us as sons and daughters. Being a son or daughter of the Lord, that is the most important title you can ever have. Aspire for that. There are people with the title prophets, prophet, apostle, every, every kind of ministry gift there is that are in hell. Judas was an apostle, condemned to hell. So the title you want to have is being a son of God. A son of God or a daughter of the Lord is not going to be in hell. So the Lord was with him and did not let none of his words fall to the ground. That can be interpreted two ways. There are some prophets in the Bible who seem as if they just said things and the Lord did it. That took any kind of, if the Lord ever allows that, is because of your relationship with him. And also having been crushed so that you don't abuse that kind of authority. When Elisha spoke with the Shunammite woman who had been so kind to him, the Bible doesn't say that he prayed to the Lord. He simply said, by this time next year, you'll be holding a son. He said it, and it seems as if the Lord did it. Now we know that the Bible tells us that basically prophecy of old was not by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. When it says, did not let none of his words fall to the ground, it seems as if what Samuel said, 
the Lord would do. A part of your walk as a prophet is to only speak when the Lord commands you to speak. Because when you speak his words, he will back it up. Some people fall into the error of, they use the term, I prophesy to you. That's not how it works. You prophesy by speaking the word of the Lord. What he gives you to say, and you speak it how and when he tells you to say it. Not because you prophesy in prosperity whatsoever to a person. That's not how it works. And it continues. And all Israel, from Dan, even to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. So it was a time, a process. You start saying things, and either people can discern by what you speak, how you speak it, or maybe make predictions that come to pass. But we know the testament of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Revelation 19.10. So a prophecy should glorify Jesus. It should testify of him. A prophecy from the Lord. As an immersion prophet, you have to be patient. You have to be patient. And later on in life, you may pray you could or wish you could go back to the times when you could have some peace where people would know who you are, whether the enemy or other Christians. The growing pains. Someone who um, epitomizes this is David. The Lord had anointed him as king. But he had to go through some things. Another person went through growing pains, and they all did. But Joseph, when Joseph was 17, the Lord gave him two dreams to let him know that his family would one day bow down to him. But it took 13 years later before the Lord allowed Joseph to interpret Pharaoh's two dreams. 13 years. His process was 13. Moses was 40. Elisha was with Elijah for more than 20 years. It may take time and you have to be patient. The Lord knows exactly where you are. He knows how to find you. And he knows how and when to use you. David also went through a process. After he had been anointed, it took years for him to ascend to the throne. And initially, he was crowned as king over Hebron. And he had to wait another seven years to finally become the king of, of all Israel. It took time. And you have to be patient and endure the process. The Lord knows what he's doing. So share a little bit of David's life. So in 1 Samuel 16, in verse 3. Actually, correction. Let's start verse 16. And to set the table here, the Lord had sent Samuel to anoint one of Jesse's sons as king. And it came to pass... When they were come, that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. So Samuel assumed that Eliab was the one who um, the Lord had chosen. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, By the way, there are times when you may feel overlooked. People may even come to you for things. And if someone says, um, do you know of any prophets? And you're thinking they're going to say, oh, that person over there. They may be like, nope. And you're like, this person had a dream and um, the Lord used me to interpret it. I told this person that he or she was going to get married and have a baby and now married and baby and 
all those things, all those signs, where you feel overlooked. You feel overlooked. Again, the Lord knows who you are. Because I have refused them. For the Lord seeth, not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Then Jesse called Aninadab, and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse made Shema pass to pass by. And he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord hath not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? Hmm. And he said, There remaineth the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. So David wasn't even considered. Again, Initially, you'll feel overlooked. And one of the byproducts of that is to teach you not to crave the spotlight. All the glory goes to God. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, and withal of a beautiful countenance, and goodly to look at. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. It's nothing about being called. We can say being anointed, in being trained and equipped. But being sent, that is a different story. You may have the calling of a prophet, but it doesn't mean you're actually a prophet as of yet. The Lord may not have set you in a position. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. So he anointed David as king. But David did not go sit in the throne the other day. David did not go to Saul and say, Okay, give it up, I'm king now. There was preparation. So you may have the calling for prophet and not be a prophet as yet. And in fact, when David finally became king, the scripture actually tells us that he perceived that the Lord had made him king. So there are different ways where the Lord will let you know. And there's another video about how to know that you are a prophet of the Lord. So we see how the Lord had Samuel anoint David as king in front of his entire family. But later on, David's father sent him to check on his three eldest brothers who were lined up in battle or for a battle against the Philistines. But they were cowering from a man named Goliath. And when David showed up, starting in verse 23 of 1 Samuel 17, and as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words, and David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him, and were sore afraid. And the men of Israel said, have ye seen this man that is come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up 
And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches, and will give him his daughter, and make his father's house free in Israel. Hmm. So the one who defeated Goliath was supposed to get one of um, Saul's daughters, and his family was supposed to live tax-free. But it wasn't about the money. And David sp spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine, and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine, that he should defy the armies of the living God? David's focus was on the Lord. And people answered him after this manner, saying, so shall it be done to the man that killeth him. And Eliab. Remember that one where Samuel was thinking, Oh man, this is the Lord's anointed. And it was like, Nope. Do not look at his countenance or his height. Because the Lord looks at people's heart. So Eliab's heart was not right in front of the Lord. You kind of see here in a second. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, why was his anger kindled against David? Now in the story of Joseph, you can kind of see why maybe his brothers were angry with him. For one, David was um, the 11th son of Jacob who had been called Israel at that time. But Israel treated David like the firstborn, gave him a coat of many colors, so he showed the favor, in part because Joseph was born of Rachel, the woman Israel actually loved. And yes, Joseph, he needs some humility, but they're angry with him. And that's when they put him in the pit, thought about killing him, but sold him into slavery instead. And from the pit to slavery and to prison, humbled Joseph. So like when he appeared before the king, the pharaoh, one of the first things he said was, do not interpretations belong to God? He was humbled, glorifying the Lord. And that's part of the reason the Lord takes you to the process. To humble you. You'll only glorify him. So Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, Why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride. Wow. I know thy pride. And the haughtiness of thine heart. For thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. Now the Lord chose David because he was a man after his own heart. But then you have his brother here saying he knows David's heart. The pride. So he was angry with his little brother. That kind of stuff causes growing pains. Also, he stomach, who do you leave those few sheep with? He knew he was speaking to the future king. It's like trying to put him in his place. So there are people who will try to hold you back when the Lord's trying to move you forward. And David said, What have I now done? Obviously, not the first time he was experiencing that kind of stuff. Is there not a cause? And he turned from him toward another, and spake after the same manner. And the people answered him again after the former manner. Sometimes you just have to walk away. And when the words were heard, which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for him. A part of being an immersion prophet is sometimes you try to create opportunities for yourself. But 
of promotion. It doesn't come from the east, west, or the south. It comes from the Lord. And there are times when you may do things to try to promote yourself, and they won't work. It's the Lord who set the conditions. He sets the conditions. He determines the time. You just have to stay there and endure the process because he will shut doors. You may think you've arrived and you find out, nope. Oh, by the way, I mentioned a radio program that I called into. Shortly afterwards, they had another young lady came on and she was a, um, she was a guest. And people would call in and she started having visions and she's just prophesying to them. I'm like, and I wasn't jealous, but I remembered how that one little dream where I had the interpretation, I was trying to give it, and that was shut down. But obviously, for that young lady, it was her time to minister her gifts in that way. So do not be discouraged because there are growing pains. If the Lord called you, then He's going to see that work through to its completion, and in due time, he will lift you up. But it's like being in the oven. You don't want to come out half-baked. You want to get exposed and just immediately crumble under the pressure. Let the Lord put you through the process. The Lord is a, is a strategic thinker. He's looking at the long term. He doesn't want to be like a light that burns brightly like fireworks and then quickly fizzle. He wants a light to burn. Jesus said, basically one who endures until the end, that person shall be saved. So the Lord wants you to endure. He wants you to endure the personal conflicts that may arise. See me things from your flesh, the spiritual battles, the rigors of being a prophet, and he's preparing you. And he's methodical. He may not open the flood doors all at once, incrementally, because he doesn't want you to fail. He does not want you to fail. And one of the things you have to be careful for is the enemy sending someone who has discerned your gift and or calling and is trying to put you in a position that you're not ready for but then again, if the person's coming from an enemy, that person is going to basically try to get you to work for the devil. So wait on the Lord for the time that he chooses to expose you to the world as one of his prophets. Jesus was alive for 30 years until the heaven father, father finally said on the day of his baptism, as shown in Matthew 3, 16 and 17. And even before that, in, in John 1, it tells us how twice John the Baptist pointed to Jesus and said, Behold the Lamb of God, the one who comes to take away the sin of the world. So John pointed out Jesus. Then after Jesus' baptism, the Holy Spirit descended on him in the form of a dove and rested on him. So John called him out, the Holy Spirit confirmed it, and then a Father from heaven to behold my son in whom I'm well pleased. So in due time, the Lord will let, you know, will let others know who you are. And a part of the process is that some won't even accept you because there's some Christians, they've read the Bible, they probably know the Bible better than you, and they don't believe that prophets exist today, at least not prophets of the Lord. But because you've been overlooked, it also teaches you to not rely on the praises of people. Because even though Jesus was, Jesus was 30 years old, when he finally got called out, put out to the public, when Jesus was 12, he told Mary and Joseph that he must be about the Father's business. So he knew he was the Son of God. But he had to wait 18 additional years for him to be called out. So, you may know who you are, 
But in due time, the Lord will tell others who you are. I pray this has been a blessing to you. And if you're going through those growing pains, wait on the Lord. And by the way, growing pains is not just from the time that you may perceive or know you have a calling up until the time that the Lord actually puts you in a position. There are growing pains along the way, all meant to keep you humble. And you just don't grow to one position and stop. You're supposed to grow continually. God bless you.